This is the Infinite Music Box built at Jacobs Hall at UC Berkeley. We hope you enjoy. Our goal was to develop a music box capable of playing a variety of full-length songs rather than just one small snippet of an individual song. The way this works is that actuators fire to set the positions of buttons which are made from click pens and when the buttons are clicked out a note is played while when the buttons are clicked in the pen cap misses and no note is played. First it actuates the bump to put it into an up position and then the bump rotates around until it gets here to the plunger, which it will hit to make a noise. Then it comes back around and it has stored in memory that that bump was up, so the actuator will fire again to put it back down. The whole thing is run off of a PSOC microcontroller, which then using five volt signal controls this big group of relays we have here, which then sends anywhere between a 19 and 20 volt signal to these actuators to fire. In order to accurately be pushing these pen cap bumps with the actuators, we need to know where in space we are. And that's what we use this motor for, which has an encoder on it. And we're reading in encoder counts to our microcontroller, which is telling us where exactly we are, so the actuators know when to fire, which notes to put where, and when to put them back down. We really liked the idea of creating something that could make pretty sounds that also was mechanically really beautiful and attractive. And we like the idea of creating both an auditory and visual experience for the people who would be watching. We created three prototypes before getting to this final version that you see here. The first of which was just to validate our method of creating sound, so we wanted to make sure that linear actuator solenoids hitting click pens, which then actuate a flipper, which makes a mallet move and play a note, was a viable way of creating reliable sound. In our second prototype, we tackled our next biggest challenge, which was alignment. So we created a huge network of holes along the side of one of these boards to test out a variety of different positions of all the different parts of the system. For the software for this project, we use MIDI files that other people have made on the internet, parse them into actuator instructions for the music box. We start with a MIDI file of the desired song, which we manually edit so that it fits our pitch and speed constraints. The code finds the smallest time difference between any two consecutive notes. This will determine the speed at which the drum rotates. The code assigns each note to the closest beat. It uses these assignments to create the instruction matrix for the actuators. Once we have that file all ready to go, and we've created our actuator instructions, it turns into all these zeros and ones. Finally, we're running this all on a LabVIEW GUI to send serial commands to play different instruments. 